Hello, my name is Dr. Kevin Fonseca, and I am a clinical virologist at the Provincial Laboratory for Public Health. The purpose of this educational DVD is to demonstrate collection of a nasopharyngeal swab using the appropriate transport medium and swabs. The first menu choice is an overview of the swabs, transport medium, and patient information to be collected. There are also three other segments illustrating collection of a nasopharyngeal swab from a child, adult, and senior. I should emphasize that the infection control practices shown in this DVD may differ from those in your respective facilities. Please follow the practices pertinent to your institution. Why do we collect a nasopharyngeal swab? The reason for that is that a lot of respiratory viruses and bacteria are found in the upper nasopharynx, and that's the reason we collect a nasopharyngeal swab. The nasopharynx includes the area which is shown in this diagram, and many of the viruses, such as influenza, respiratory syncytial virus, parainfluenza, adenovirus, and human metapneumovirus are found in this area. Consequently, collection of a nasopharyngeal swab rather than a nose or a throat swab is more likely to test as positive for one or more of these agents. These are the nasopharyngeal swabs, which come in packages. Each swab is separately packaged in a sterile blister wrap, and the swab should be stored at ambient temperature away from the sunlight or other heat sources. The expiry date is located on the base of the swab, and swabs should not be used past this date. There are different parts to the swab. Open the container where it says peel here, which is the side away from the collection end. As you can see, the swab has a furry tip, and studies conducted at the provincial laboratory and from the literature show that this feature increases the removal of cells which are both infected and uninfected, thereby lower, lowering the rejection rate of unsuitable samples and improving the positivity rate of samples. The, the shaft of the swab has a thicker diameter at one end where you hold it, and it progressively narrows to a thinner end culminating in the furry piece. Do not confuse this nasopharyngeal swab with a throat swab, which is shown here for comparison. On the thick part of the swab is a score line or groove shown here, which facilitates break off of the swab into the collection tube once the sample has been taken. Unless you are unduly vigorous during the swabbing process, the swab will not break off at this point. You will also find that for some patients where the swab tapers into the finest part, this is the depth to which it can be inserted into the nose. However, the depth to which it can be inserted is specific to each patient, and determining this length is shown in each of the accompanying collection clips. Finally, these swabs should only be used for the collection of nasopharyngeal samples from adults and children and should not be used to collect samples from any other of these sites. This next section describes the universal transport medium for the collection of respiratory viruses. This is the universal transport medium container, which is available from our current suppliers, which is Copan. This medium can be used for a collection of samples from a number of different respiratory and non-respiratory sources for respiratory viruses, herpes, chlamydia, urea plasma, and mycoplasma. This medium is not suitable for pertussis or bacterial pathogens. The medium to the right of the universal transport medium is Reagan low medium, which should be used for the collection of pertussis. The collection tube has an expiry date which is located in black type on the label just below the cap. Do not use it if it's past the state, has become cloudy, has turned color or has obviously leaked. You will note that the tubes are not individually packaged so that users will have to request the numbers that they need without wasting it. This medium must be stored either at room temperature in a cool place, away from heat sources and light, 
or in a fridge. It should not be frozen. Once the sample has been collected, it should be stored in a fridge in a cool, light-free place for no more than four to eight hours prior to transport to the laboratory. If a fridge is not available, it can be stored for a, about eight hours at room temperature in a cool place. Expired medium that is not obviously contaminated can be discarded in ordinary garbage. However, if it's contaminated, it should be discarded with medical waste so that it gets autoclaved and incinerated. Once you've collected the sample, ensure that you've labeled the sample device with at least two patient identifiers, specifically the patient name and either the personal health care number or date of birth. In addition, please include the specimen source, such as nasopharyngeal or throat swab. The collection tubes should be labeled either prior to or immediately after collecting the sample so that you avoid patient mix-ups and incorrect labeling, especially when collecting multiple samples from the same or different patients. Finally, if you are collecting a nasopharyngeal sample for respiratory viruses, send it in this universal transport medium. However, if it is for bordetella pertussis, send it in the Reagan low or equivalent transport medium which is shown here. Please do not mix the two as the viability of the bacteria or viruses will be adversely compromised and the sample will then be not accepted. Prior to collecting the nasopharyngeal swab, assemble the appropriate supplies such as a pen, requisition and viral transport medium. Check the expiry date of the transport medium on the container to ensure that it's still in date. Follow the appropriate infection prevention policy of your institution which may require a mask and gloves. Explain the collection procedure to the child and parent. Make the patient comfortable. And mom can hold your hand if you need to, okay? Not really. The patient's nasal passages should be clear of mucus prior to insertion of the swab. Check the distance from the tip of the ear to the nostril and insert the swab to at least half that depth. Insert the swab into the nostril with a few rotations to help collect more cells from the nasopharynx. This process may cause the patient to sneeze or cough. Snap the swab shaft into the transport medium at the score line then cap the container. Complete the labeling of the sample and requisition prior to sending it to the laboratory for testing. Remove your protective equipment and perform high hygiene.